Hi, today we're going to talk about the OM camera 150 to 600 mm lens, which is the one here in the middle. I don't own it, I've been lent it. OM cameras got in touch with me when I did a YouTube film about this lens, the 150 to 400, having been broken. The, the tripod mount here was, was seized up and I couldn't spin it round. And they, they got in touch with me to see if they could help, if they could get it repaired for me. But I'd already taken care of that. It had gone into um, loot and camera repairers, which is uh, about an hour and a half for me, but I was interested in speed. I wanted it repaired quickly. It was outside of the warranty, so I took it there. Anyway, I thought it was very good of OM cameras to, to get in touch and offer to help. And they finished off the exchange of emails by saying, if you ever want to borrow this lens, you can do. So I replied and said, yes, please. I wouldn't mind borrowing it for a little while. The following day it arrived and I've got it for one month. Now, the first thing you notice when you pick this lens up is it's very heavy. This lens weighs in at 2,065 grams. My lens, the 150 to 400, is 1,875 grams. But the, the 100 to 400 lens that they do, which is strictly speaking my wife's, although I do use it as a backup, that's only 1,102 grams. So almost half the weight of the 150 to 600. And you see it's much, much smaller too. The second thing you can say about it, or everybody is saying about it on the web, it's basically a Sigma lens. Now, I haven't handled a Sigma lens or seen one for a long time, but certainly if I, I Google it and look at the pictures, yes, it does look like a Sigma lens. It's quite a bit more expensive than the Sigma lens if you was to buy it for a, a Canon or a Nikon camera. I wouldn't imagine it's that simple to adapt a lens to fit an OM camera. It's not just putting a new mount on it. You're going to have to recalibrate it so it focuses best on, on the sensor. You're going to have to mess about with the image stabilizer as well. So there is going to be a cost to converting it to, to suit an OM camera. The zoom is the extending type, so it, it trombones out like that, which I don't tend to like, I prefer an internal zoom like the 150 to 400. It makes it quite awkward in a hide sometimes when you, you zoom back and then the fabric of the hide drops down in front of the lens because you've come inside the hide. Also, I always wonder, does it generate dust at all? Is it pumping dust onto your sensor or dust into the lens as it goes backwards or forwards? Used to think about that when I had the, the Canon 100 to 400 zoom, which was the same. Never really liked it, but big difference between the, the Canon 100 and 400 and this one is it's, this is very well engineered. There's no flop at the front. The Canon one, there was quite a lot of flop there when it was fully extended. So anyway, on the side here, you've got a, a lock position where you can have it locked completely so it doesn't move at all when you're carrying it. So it will only lock at the 150 mil end, but now that's won't move at all. Or we can go on to S, so it's quite quite slack and, and zooms quite easily. Or we'll put it onto T for tighten or tension. And then it's a, a stiffer zoom. So I think I'd normally have it on the on the S. And then on the other side, we've got the usual things you get on telephoto lenses, a focus limiter, uh, autofocus or manual focus, and the image stabilizer on or off. I do like the fact that the focus ring is set at the back of the lens. On my 150 to 400, it's at the front. And since I manually focus a fair bit shooting video, then I'm having to stretch a long way forward to grab the focus ring. Much better at the back, but the focus ring is very low geared. So you have to turn it a long way to bring things into focus. And then it becomes a bit vague. It doesn't snap into focus manually. You have to go backwards and forwards quite a bit with it. Now, when it comes to the image stabilizer, this is getting quite confusing now. There's so many numbers out there. If you have the latest OM camera, the OM1 Mark II, then when you're at the maximum telephoto end, you've got six stops of image stabilizer. If you zoom back, you've now got seven stops of image stabilizer. It's the first time they've announced the different numbers of, with the, the different zooms. That's possibly the same with this, but they've never, never said anything about that. 
when it comes to the uh, the lens mount it doesn't have that clicking position it's, it turns quite smoothly in the mount but this one turns and clicks when you've turned 90 degrees which is quite useful when you're going from a horizontal picture to a vertical picture you don't get that with this lens it is rain resistant the same as this lens is you can't put them under water but if it's raining you won't damage the lens it's not going to get waterlogged in the, in the rain when it comes to comparing the physical side i haven't helped the situation by not being able to find the lens hood for the 100 to 400 mil lens on the right hand side the other two have got the lens hoods on the 150 to 600 in the middle is the longest when it's at 600 mil but once you zoom back to the 150 mil end then it is shorter than the 150 to 400 but take the lens hoods off as you might do when you're traveling or flying and trying to keep all your gear compact there's not a huge difference between them. I've come to Brian Pitt's farm near Bromsgrove in Worcestershire. And the reason I've come here is it's very close to where I live, but they've got a number of hides which are set up for photographers, not bird watchers hides you get on nature reserves. Here, the hides are designed so you're close enough to the subject to photograph it, got nice backgrounds and the lights in the right direction too. So I'm in the Kestrel hide, but there's also a little owl hide, a kingfisher hide, a reed bed hide and a scrape hide too. So I've been doing the Kestrel all day. It's just an opportunity to take pictures of a real bird with this lens. The first thing you notice about the lens is the pulling power, the zoom range. I've never used a lens with such a long zoom range. So here I'm starting off at 150 mil, turning the zoom ring, but I can't turn it all the way. You've got to take your hand off the ring, readjust your hand, turn it again and then once more take your hand off the ring and turn it a third time to get to the maximum of 600 mil and just a couple of pictures i took a few days ago a wren on a reed stem at 150 mil and then 600 mil fantastic pulling power now i haven't used a sigma lens for some years but when I have used them in the past, I was always very aware that their long zoom lenses were never very sharp at the maximum zoom. If you zoom back a bit, they were optically okay, but at the maximum zoom, they were actually quite poor. So that was the first thing I was looking for with this lens. What did it perform like at the 600 mil end? So this picture is at 274 mil, and then I've zoomed in here, this is 600 mil, and optically, very pleasing. Nothing wrong with that at all. I try to take very similar pictures with both the 150 to 400 mil and the 150 to 600. So here, I've zoomed back to 400 mil with the 150 to 600, and then taken the same picture at 400 mil with the 150 to 400 mil. Is there a difference between the two? Yes, there is, but it's very hard to see it. I would not expect you to be able to see this on YouTube. YouTube is, is compressed video. You're, you're very unlikely to be able to see any of these subtle differences. But I'm looking at a large monitor with high res files and I can just about see a difference. But really, to see that difference, you have to have both pictures on the screen at the same time and then you can convince yourself that the right-hand picture is marginally better. There's something about the quality there, but it's very hard to see it. All of these pictures are taken with the lens wide open, and at the 600mm end, that means f6.3 is your widest aperture. And what happens when you put extenders on? Well, this is the 1.4 extender. The quality does drop off a little bit, but it's still acceptable which is exactly how I feel about the 1.4 extender on the 150 to 400 mm lens. Acceptable, but not perfect. Put the two times extender on and we have a 1200 mm lens, the equivalent of 2400 on a full chip camera, and the image is definitely on the soft side. This is not a combination that I would normally use, and I very rarely use the two times on the 150 to 400 either, for the same reason. I'll just show a few more pictures I've taken with the lens over the last few weeks. And another example of a shell duck where it's a 150mm end 
and then the 600mm end. I have no problems at all with the quality of the lens, I'd be quite happy to use it. The difference between this lens and the more expensive 150 to 400 is marginal, which is what I've also said about the 100 to 400 mil lens. There's very little difference between the two. When it comes to birds in flight, I didn't have a lot of opportunity, but I didn't notice it lagging behind what I'd expect from my more expensive lens and when we got a messy background it was keeping birds in focus. Now do I intend buying this lens? Well no, but if I ever see one coming up very cheaply on the second hand market I will be tempted. It will be very useful for those occasions when you're doing something let's say like great crested grebes displaying which are usually at a great distance. Well the fantastic pulling power of this lens would make it very useful and I'd like to have it amongst my kit. I wonder if OM cameras ever forget to ask for loan equipment back. Thanks for watching.